Okay, so I'm here with um, Matthew Crawford, who's the former second team captain at Downing Cricket Club and also a current first team player. Um, Crawf, firstly, could you just tell the listeners about you know your cricketing career and how it, how Downing came? Did they approach you in your life or did you just move there? No, so um, I started my cricketing career at a little club called Wick. Um, then my father said to me, Matt, if you want to progress in cricket, um, you need to join a, a bigger club. So I went to join Tainchum um, at the age of probably 11. Yeah. Um, and uh, I played in their youth team um, probably a couple of years above what I should have been. So I was probably playing under-17s cricket at 15 years old. Um, then I progressed on to play senior cricket at Canesham, um, uh with mainly the second team. Um, then I did break into the first team um, with... Uh, I don't know, um, probably, um, I don't know, <laughs> <That's the> worst, <laughs> right? um, yeah, so I, I, I played mostly my cricket in the second team at Kingsham, I did break into the first team, um, then I had a bit of a falling out, and then I joined Downend, and um, here we are now. Um, and just to quickly ask you, why was it Downend that you went to? Well, I went to school with the Jacksons, so uh, I had a connection there. So I came, I came across, rang Matt and said, um, could I join? And he said, yes, come along, training, and, and, and that was it. And from there, I guess you uh, went to training and they thought, blimey, we'll put him in the thirds this week and see how it goes, or was it a different story? No, it was, uh, well, it was a very similar story. So I did, I went and started playing in the twos. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think we were probably short in the first team once. And uh, I then had my opportunity to go and play in the first team, um, yeah, under the captain of Mike Ponter at the time. So, can you remember the year that you, not that you joined Downend, but the year that you broke into the first team or, or your debut for Downend? Uh, yes, I think it was in 2009. Okay. Um, and I, like I said, I left Kingston and it was mid, midway through the season. So, ah, so you had joined Downend midway through a season, midway through a I cricket did. season? Yes, correct. Ah, ah, right, I see. And you broke into the first team at Downend, did you say? Yeah, so I think I played my first game in the twos under the captain of Mike Lewis. Okay. Um, away to Chippenham. Yeah. Not sure how we got on. I think we did lose. Um, <laughs> I've done okay. I probably got 40. Um, and then uh, Michael said, you know, we want you to play in the first team. Um, so that's, that's how it really happened. And it's not. it hasn't been a case... Um, of not looking back because you have also then um, when I've played with you Crawls you've been in the twos and the threes when I've played with you and now in the ones so um... yeah I've had a bit of a roller coaster, <laughs> roller coaster career to be fair <laughs> ups and downs um, probably lots more ups than downs to be quite honest that's good to hear yeah and um, what, can you remember your highest score talking of ups or you know your your best moment as a cricketer personally yeah so my highest score, I think, for Downend, um, anyway, is is 115, and that was in a Sunday league game. Not that we have Sunday league games anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I think the highlight of my career was um, at the age of 17, I was playing for Cainsham yep. um, in the first team, and we played against Bath, and um, I scored 50, 55 at the age of 17. Yeah. Um, and I think I still hold that record for the youngest player to score... Uh, the highest score against Bath to this day. Oh wow, that's quite that's quite an achievement, Cross. You should be quite proud yeah. of yourself. Absolutely, and every time I go up for a beer, they they always remind me. So it's quite <laughs> nice. Are you on the honours board at Kingston Cricket Club? <laughs> Unfortunately, not. <laughs> <laughs> um, just moving on from from the ups. Obviously, there's been some downs as well. Um, could you care to explain to the listeners some of the downs as well that you faced in your career? Yeah, so obviously, as uh, as cricket's a funny game, really. You uh, you know, one minute you could be at the top of the tree, next minute you could be on the floor. Um, it's been yeah. So if 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 you if you do well, you obviously move up the ladder. Um, I'm pro probably, if I'm honest, I'm probably a, a a good second team player. I'm probably playing above where I should be, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't want to down myself, but. 
yeah, it's um, I'm, I would I would put myself as a as a as a good a very good second team player. Um, I've been playing in the first team at Downend um, on and off, and last season I did play pretty much all season. So I, I really enjoyed it. You've enjoyed it, and you said there about being a very good second team player. You're actually the captain of the second team as well um, at Downend. And who did you take the captaincy over from? So um, yes, I took the captaincy over from um, Ollie Ralph, and I think that was in 2014. Yeah. Um, and I captained for four seasons. Yeah. Um, and then passed it over to um, Ben Pierce. Uh, ben Pierce. Um, yeah, as you know, you know, being a captain is a is a thankless task. To be fair. Yeah. Um, I, you... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I was just going to ask you that as well about. Um, I've got all respect up and down the country for captains, you know, whatever standard it is. And I think in the first team at Downend, it's quite, it's quite easy because you know, you know, you know what team you're playing against. You know where the ground is. Whereas in the second team, um, you play against all kinds of standards of teams um, regarding, you know, their their status in their first team, second team or third team. But it's also the arranging of fixtures of playing games and sometimes cup competitions that can be a lot harder. So... Um, was it quite a quite a big task captaining a second team? Um, I think the second team, um, you know, to be to be captain of a second team is not as difficult as a third or a fourth team. Because, no, not at you all. Know, um, sometimes the first team captain captain could ring you up on a on a Saturday morning at ten o'clock saying, unfortunately, um, one of our players has fallen ill. Um, so then we've got to, you know, go down to the third team to drag somebody up. So you know, I think. As, 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 as you know, um, being a captain is a, is a thankless task, like I said. Um, but I think, you know, second team, middle of the road, it, it was it was tough, um, but not as tough as it, it would have been if you were a third or fourth team captain. You must have, over your time, um, firstly, playing at Downend, um, not captain in Undercrawl, so I want to make this clear, but playing at Downend, who would you say has been one of the best players that you've seen play with, that you've played with, sorry? Yeah, um, I think the best probably player I've played with um, has got to be uh, has got to be Michael Ponter. Um, yeah. Great, great batsman, great wicketkeeper, great fielder, great bowler, great all rounder. You know, and a, and a and a lovely guy. I'm sure uh, he's smiling right now as you say this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also from from captaining, you obviously picked a lot of players over your time. Um, Hint, hint. And uh, who was your who was your favourite play, play, player to captain under? Um, I think that's quite a tough uh, question. That um... it's meant to be Crofts. <laughs> <laughs> no. I would like to say um, Joe Tolman. Really? Although Joe, although Joe is 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 quite an awkward guy to uh, captain. <laughs> um, you know, as being a typical teacher, he doesn't like what uh, what you say sometimes, and you know, do as I say. Um, but yeah, I think he's he, he's a guy who gives you one hundred and ten percent each week. He's a winner. He wants to win games, you know, and he takes it to heart if we lose and we perhaps could have done better. Um, you know, give that a little extra ten percent the whole team. Um, so yeah, I think Joe would be would be definitely up there. And was there any reason to after your captaincy? Um, give it to Ben Pierce, who who's now also handed it over to Ollie Ralph. Um, yeah, so if I'm honest, I wanted to get out of jail card. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Um, fair enough. So I know I know Ben wanted to do it when I when I um, when I took it over uh, back in 2014, um, and he, he was keen to do it, and 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 sort of when the opportunity came that he I knew he wanted to do it again, I kind of pushed it on him a bit quick. Yeah. Um, just to get just to get out of jail card, really. Um, just that I've done it for four years, and I think you know you can only be a captain for so long. Yeah, yeah. So being a captain for so long, and then handing it over was. Did you still have aspirations of playing in the first team? Because if you did, it's it's worked, obviously. I I I didn't think, if I'm honest, I'd ever play in the first team ever again, um, and that only came about of last year um, as. I scored a hundred and seven um, against Porter's uh, head. Port, head um, for the twos, the second game of the season, um, and then I had the uh, well, 
vice captain for me, yeah, Callum Gregory, and <laughs> Shane Croft. Do, do you know who would who would be able to come up from what, the two? So, so I kind of said, well, what do you say yourself? Was, sorry, man. Did you say yourself? I didn't say myself. <laughs> no, I just said, well, you know, on performances, there's not really a lot of other, other options than myself to be there. <laughs> um, so he gave me a go, and yeah, it was uh, it was a it was a great first team debut again. Um, and we played against Clevedon at home. Uh, we actually stuffed them out of sight. And I think everybody who batted um, done really well. Um, and I managed to get 40. Um, so, yeah, I was chuffed to bits. You were chuffed to bits. And I think we can remember um, not watching the live stream because Downend um, were unable to, to to give that to members last year. However, um Listeners and you, of course, will be glad to hear that that is happening now and we will be live streaming games. Um, but we were also looking at it on the uh, the live scores on the cricket website and saw that you'd you'd come in, you'd hit a few off your legs. We probably thought that you'd walk over to off stump and whack it in the churchyard, and I guess you did that so. I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the famous sweet boat. <laughs> Get the broom out. Um, yeah. So I've played cricket with you, Cross, and... Many people who have will know that you've got fantastic pair of hands um, catching a cricket ball. I mean, it's like glue. Um, some of the th- ones that you took off me, some absolutely horrendous bowling, and you managed to you managed to catch it. I don't know, but can you remember any any memorable catches at all? Um, yeah, I've taken a few over my time, um, but yes, no. Uh... I think I think the one that sticks in my mind, to be fair, is is probably the best catch I've ever uh, I've ever taken, and and that was in a in a friendly with and it was off your bowling actually. And oh, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> the fire brigade. Um, I'm, I I still think my hands are stinging now. <laughs> uh, the, the guy has hit it so hard, and it, like you said, it's just stuck like glue, and some of them do stick like glue, and some of them just pop out. But fortunately for you, um, it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I just like you like you because you've told me this story, of course, and I'm sure listeners would like to hear it. The the story of, um, you'll hate me for digging him out, but when Jordan Garrett used to hide you at fine leg, didn't he? And I Absolutely. think I think it was one week was it against Taunton, Taunton St Andrews or Taunton Dean, and um, Greg's Callum Gregory had told Jordan you need to get in the inner ring, and. Uh, Talk me through the inner ring situation and the the catch that you took off of. I think it was Loudy's bowling or something. Yeah, so I think I think all that sort of um, boundary fielding came from um, when we played down at Bedminster. So <laughs> um, I, I was fielding it uh, mid wicket um, off a of Jacko's bowling, and I'm not kidding you. The, the guy could have just thrown the ball up, and it was such an easy catch, and I dropped it. Um, and yeah, it was really embarrassing. Um, and from that day on, Jordan thought I couldn't catch. So <laughs> he was hiding me in the field, and I spent hours on the boundary. And I, I thought I hate this, so I did go up to Callum and say, "You need to get me in the ring. You know, you need to get me in the ring." So um, yes, and it was down at Tottenham St Andrews, and um, Larry came on to bowl and said, "Cross, you know, short cover." So um, I did, and, and, and Jordan said, "No, no, no, no." You can't do that, you can't catch. <laughs> and Lowry said, no, I want him there. And I think it was the second or third bowl um, that Callum bowled. And yeah, it was a part of two, to be fair. Um, but he's, the, the guy smoked it straight to me. And, and I think Jordan was, was gobsmacked. And he said, you can catch. And I said, well, I've been trying to tell you this for weeks. But you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, then uh, the rest of the season, I was fielding in the ring. Uh, which was which was nice, and the game goes a lot quicker when you're uh, when you're in the action. Yeah, I I get that. And can you remember any games last season that kind of stuck out for you as a as a game to remember in the first team? Um, I think it's it's got to be the the Cleveland game um, yeah. that sticks out for me personally. I done you know well. Um, we won the game, um, you know, and like I said, everybody in the everyone had batted. Um, it, it, it batted really, really well, and, and we just put them to shame. And they were the ex champions, you know, and we made them look really, really Joe average. I think that, that was probably the best team performance and one that sticks in my mind. Yeah, certainly different from Clevedon away, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I was fortunate to miss that one. <laughs> Sick. Um, from 
<clears throat> I spoke to Michael Ponta and my dad, who have both now, well, Pont comes back now and again, but have probably both retired and, play, you know, they played cricket for Downend and, are, you know, they're old golds, really. They they used to play and they haven't really seen the club develop from the playing side of things. Um, Could you just maybe give the listeners an insight as to how well the club's doing off the pitch, but also how you can see it and how well it's developing on the pitch? Yeah, so, um, well, as, as we all know, the, the renovation of the club, um, change the rooms, which, which we're very tired, um, has, has come on. I haven't personally seen them, but I've seen them, photos of them, um, which is a great step in the right direction. Um, there's lots of youth uh, teams now with lots of really, really good coaching from Ollie Ralph. And I think, you know, it's tough to, you know, grassroots cricket is really, really tough to sort of bring and usher these players through to the ultimate goal, which is, you know, your first team. Yeah. Um, and I think we've got some, you know, yourself included in that. You've come up through the ranks. Um, and it's really nice to see, you know, young lads coming up through and, and really doing well and really shining. So really? I think, you know, and the, the ground looks a picture every time you go there. You know, it's just a, an incredible place to play cricket. OK, yeah, it's a bit small. People say, oh, I can't you score runs, but people come there and look at the short boundaries and they just think, well, I can just hit this, you know, at the ground and, and they get unstuck. You, you really need to play the ground, you know, to the best of your ability, um, you know, and it, it's brilliant because I like it down there because I don't have to do too much running. <laughs> <laughs> So would you not mind being stuck on the boundary at down end? Uh, at least I could hit the keeper from the boundary. <laughs> um, Cross, Matt, thank you very much for um, taking your time out and speaking to me on this uh, lovely Sunday afternoon after your uh, after your walking quarantine. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ollie. Cheers.